All right, YouTube, I hope you're all good. Now in today's video, I want to discuss Final Cut Pro's odd approach to its filing system. The difference between library, event, project, what does it mean? How do you use it? Let's crack on. Start it up. So once you open up Final Cut Pro, you're introduced with this blank screen. So the first thing you need to do is go to file, new, and then you hit with library. What does library even mean? The best way for me to describe what a library is, is it's the actual file that you're going to create, which is going to contain all the information that you need for those projects, if that makes sense. Let me just show you. Right, so you create new library. Now the main thing to point out about a library is the library itself doesn't ha actually have to be stored anywhere permanent, if that makes sense. Because Final Cut Pro's projects, libraries, whatever you want to call them, get massive, like we're talking one, two, 300 gigs in size, they absolutely get huge. This eats up your hard drive. So what I like to do is have a separate hard drive that is just for working projects. And then once those projects are complete, I then file them away into a different hard drive. I have two external SSD drives, or if you can utilize your internal SSD, which is even faster. I use this one here when I'm creating a new project. So for example, I've got filmmaking YouTube, YouTube 2022, and these are my working projects at the moment. Obviously this one is about file management. So this is where I'm going to store temporarily my library. Let's just give that a name. We'll call it the same thing. Final Cut Pro File Management. Save. So once you've created the library, you then need to populate that library with all your footage, any imagery, music, etc., etc. However, these do not need to be located in the same file as your library, which is why I like to create my library in a temporary folder so that if it does end up being one, two, three hundred gigabytes, I've got this separate SSD that's not going to be filled up and I'm not going to be able to finish my project. So I like to create that somewhere else and then populate my other external hard drive with the footage, with the music, the imagery, whatever is going to go inside this, this library, essentially. I hope that makes sense because I have no idea if I'm making sense. But yeah, let me crack on. So now that you've created your library, it automatically creates an event. So this event is by default given by the date that you've created it on. So as you can see on this date, it's the 3rd of June, or if you're in America, don't get confused by that orientation. It's actually the 3rd of June, not <laughs> the 6th of March. So you can actually rename that to anything. So the first thing I like to do is rename that to footage. So that's an event that has been created automatically. I'll go into what an event is in just a second. But what I like to do is create another event. So I'll go to file, new event, and then I might call this assets. And I want to create this within the library of Final Cut Pro file management and press OK. I also want to create a third event. And I'm going to call that media. Right, so I've created three events there. And you might be a bit confused as to why I've created an assets, footage and media event and what they are. Basically, an event is a subfold folder of your library. So it's a category within your library. So as I mentioned before, I like to have a second hard drive, which contains all the video footage itself, along with any stills, any music, whatever is going to be used in those projects. So I like to put this on a separate hard drive, which is going to be its permanent storage position, permanent location if you will. So this doesn't get moved, which is why it's quite important to set up a decent filing structure to begin with. So then you're not getting it messy. So you can refer back to things at a later date. So if you do want to pull up a clip that you filmed three years ago, you should be able to find it fairly easy if you've got a decent file management system. So I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to my other hard drive, which again is its permanent location for all the footage. So I've got filmmaking and I try and keep them in date order. So I've got 2020, 2021. So in 2022, if we click on there, you'll see that it's creators block YouTube. 2022. So I'll go back into that. And as you can see, I've already created a Final Cut Pro file management folder there. I've also got some containing folders in there that are similar to what we called our events. So this might be starting to make a bit more sense. So in this folder here, I've got assets, footage, media, and thumbnail. So yeah, in here, I've got assets and within assets, I've got two subfolders, images and logos. You could have something different. It doesn't have to be images and logos, whatever it is you are putting into your project. I just tend to be putting in quite a lot of images, quite a lot of logos. So that's why I've created those two folders. But moving forward, if I had something different, I would probably create another folder. And I'll show you how naming these folders helps you inside of Final Cut Pro in a minute. Then I have another folder called footage. 
and then inside footage again some more subfolders so just like the assets folder I like to segregate my footage as well so if I've got drone footage if I've got GoPro footage if I've got two cameras your B cam your A cam whatever this is entirely up to you you can do whatever you want so as you can see I've got drone footage Sony a7s3 footage and then time-lapse videos then you'll see that there is another folder called media again you can put whatever you want in this media folder. Again, you don't even need to call it media. You can call it whatever you want. It's up to you. This is just how I do it. Media can be music, sound effects, whatever. I've just put a music folder in there, so nothing too complicated. And as I said before, thumbnail, that's for after the video. It's not, not important for this. So now that we've got the file management sort of set up, these are going to be their permanent location because your library is going to root itself back to this exact spot for each clip, for each image that is used within those projects. So if you then move them, to a different folder when you open up that library again it's going to have loads of missing files because it's not going to be able to locate them it's not going to be able to find the file path so it's quite important that you maintain a decent file management system i think it just makes things a lot easier moving forward so the cool thing now is now that i've got my filing system all sorted and it's all well labeled and it's all categorized these can actually work to my benefit inside final cut pro by creating what are called keyword collections within these events so i'm going to show you what that means obviously all these things here i want to be accessible inside my project all you need to do is for example the assets there i've got images so i'm just going to drag that whole folder and hover over assets as you can see it's highlighted once i let go it then creates what's called a keyword collection so this keyword collection is a really easy way to then refer back to your various different categories that you've created to make it easy while you're working on the project so you can do this for everything so if we go back to our file and go to logos drag that across as you can see it's now created two keyword collections so let's do that for the rest so the good thing about this is if I've got footage selected, it's going to show you everything that is contained within that event, including all of the sub keyword collections. However, if I wanted to just look at the drone footage, I can just click on there. And as you can see, I've got three or four clips that are just drone footage. If I want to click on the actual Sony camera footage, we've got four or five clips there again just the camera footage. So yeah, an important thing to point out at the moment is I've already set up my preferences for how I like to import media. So what I'll show you now is if you were to do this manually, you would normally go to file and then you would go to import and media. And then you'd be introduced with this screen here, which not only can you then go to wherever the file location is to choose whatever you want to import, but on the right hand side here, it gives you different preferences that you can choose from. This bit here being the most important for me is you can either copy to the library. So this means that anything that you've imported will then be stored and located inside the file that you created originally. So inside the library it then contains itself as one file. So if you want to keep everything in one place and you never want to cross over into different projects, that's it every single piece of footage that you're ever going to use for that project is going to be stored there and is never going to be used elsewhere then i would recommend that you do that copy to library i don't like to use that i like to leave the files in place so the main reason i like to keep all the files in their original location is for future use if i then have another project that I want to use the same piece of drone footage I know where it's going to be located and it's also not going to be duplicating the storage of that video clip because if it's stored inside the containing file inside the containing library and then you want to later use it into a different project in a different library it's then going to store it in that library and then you've got you know it might be two gig in size so then you've duplicated that footage twice whereas if you keep it in the same location the library is always referring back to the same place it's not actually copying it and storing it elsewhere and copying it and storing it elsewhere because you imagine you've got thousands of clips over the years and you might reuse quite a lot of them you're going to end up duplicating footage it gets a bit messy so i don't like to do that i like to keep them in their original location so that i'm storing them once it also keeps the library file down in size as well also what i like to do here is the transcode you can create optimized media and you can create proxy media so what I like to do is I like to create proxy files, which makes my editing workflow a lot quicker. Now I did make another video on this, which I'll link somewhere up here, which I would recommend that you check out. So because I've saved all these preferences myself, I know that every time I drag and drop a folder into these events to create these keyword collections, I know that they're gonna create proxies automatically and that all of the footage is going to remain in its original location. 
Right, so we've covered what a library is and we've covered what an event is and how you can create these keyword collections inside your events to make it a little bit more organized. So now you're ready to create your own project. So a project is actually the video project that you're going to create. It's not, at the beginning I got quite confused using Final Cut Pro because to me a project is, I want to create a project first, surely, because I'm starting a new project. But Final Cut Pro like to call it a library, which is essentially creating a new file. And then in that file, you've got subfolders, which are the events. It gets very, very confusing. And then you can create your project within inside that library using those events. <laughs> does this even make any sense? I hope it does. So we created our library, we created our events. So now it's time to create a project. So now you can call it whatever you want. I want it to be 4K, that resolution, 25 frames per second, blah, 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 press OK. And that's it, we're now ready to start our project, finally. So one thing you might be asking is, why is the library and the project generally the same thing? This part is the bit that took me a while to actually figure out and it's actually what is the difference between the project and the library, like why have two different, why do you have to name it twice? Why do you have to create a new project? Why do you have to create a new library? Why can't you just create a new project and then import your data, import your media into that project? Why does it need to be called a library? And I think the best way for me to explain it is if you're doing videos like this, which is just a YouTube video, then that might get a bit confusing because you're going to create your library, which you're going to call your video project. So if you're doing 10 things I hate about Donald Trump, then you're probably going to start a library, 10 things I hate about Donald Trump, you're going to film this, you're going to put some videos in, you're going to put some assets in, you're going to put some Im imagery in, so you're going to create your events, then you're going to create your project, which is also going to be called 10 things I hate about Donald Trump. So that's if you're doing it for YouTube, you generally don't reuse a lot of the same footage all the time. However, if you're doing client work, for example, I do quite a lot of social media management for restaurants, bars. And what I like to do is I like to create a library, which is actually the client name. So for example, I create a new library called McDonald's. I don't work for McDonald's, but if we did, then in McDonald's, I create similar events as to what we've just seen. And then I might be doing a video for McDonald's once a month. So that's 12 throughout the year. So I'm going to create a new video project each month within that library McDonald's and call it Valentine's Day Special Weekend and then use the footage that is inside those events, inside those keyword collections. Then it comes to March and there might be a Mother's Day special. So then I'm going to create a new video for McDonald's for Mother's Day. So I'm going to keep it in the same library because I might still want to use some of the footage that I took in February for Valentine's Day in the March video. So that's how the library becomes different to the project because the library is actually the overall hub, the main source of all the information, whereas the project is just a project using the information. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So in this case, if I've got McDonald's and I'm doing 12 videos, 12 video projects a year for them, what I might want to do is create a separate event and call this McDonald's projects. So because I've created a projects event, any future projects that I create, I'm going to put inside this projects event because it makes it easy for me to then locate the projects if I ever need to go back because there are always changes. There are always changes. So one thing to note is the folders that the events are directed from. So the original folders that you created in your hard drive, they don't automatically update. So if you do a future shoot or whatever and then you drag and drop 50 more video clips that you took over the weekend inside that folder when you open up final cut pro and in your events it doesn't then go back to that folder and think ah there's 10 new clips i'll now import them in you've actually still got to manually import them in yourself so that's quite important to remember however it's still very easy because you don't need to you don't need to single them out and drag them and drop them in you can still just drag that same folder over even if it's got the 20 previous clips in and it won't duplicate them in it'll just add them add the extra 10 if that makes sense so yeah, I hope this video helped. As I said before, this is just my interpretation of Final Cut Pro's odd approach to its filing structure and how I've created my own file management system to best benefit my workflow. It might not be the best solution out there. You guys might have a better interpretation and better solution. If you do have any improvements, please leave a comment below. It'd be much appreciated. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, all those nice things that will put a smile on my face. And I'll see you in the next video. Start it up.